So the first towns in New Zealand. This is from Te Ara. This is the narrative of New Zealand. I'm not going to read through it, but we're just going to flick down to here. So these were the New Zealand Company towns. The New Zealand Company was the controllers, the first ones to come here and set up the New Zealand Company. They uh, were part, as you can see here, 1839, Mr Hobson was the East, it was from the East India Company. That's where, and there's so much online about the East India Company. Style factories. Now, I've just looked at that word again. You know, we have spelling and all words when you break them down now quite what we think they are. So looking at factories now, fact or re. So it's sort of like a story, but a fact or re. That's interesting. I just spotted that whilst reading this. Um, my dissertation I did back in back in the day, 20 years ago now, was about the Industrial Revolution. And so obviously Henry Ford and his fact factories. So I used to work in a factory as a sewing machinist, again, 30 years ago now. Um, so yeah, interesting. So New Zealand Company Towns, I just looked up, I wanted to see which were the, uh, the first towns to appear. So, as the ink on the Treaty of Waitangi was drying, new towns were being founded. Not new towns were being built, new towns were being found. It. It's all there in front of us. We know what the word found means. It doesn't mean built, it means found. Just as the Freemasons found all the free masonry okay so let's look at this wellington was the first settlement of the london based new zealand company always they have all these limited companies often have three words as well the magic power of three set up by englishman edward gibbon wakefield to colonize 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 parts of new zealand other company towns followed, Whanganui, 1840, New Plymouth, 1841, Nelson, 1842. Wow, these massive cities were just getting going in a <laughs> really quick time. Dunedin settled by the Otago Association in 1848 and Christchurch in 1850. Uh, his vision was of a closely settled rural society based on cropping Ironically, the goal of country life was reliant on towns. Each settlement was to be funded through buying Maori land cheaply and selling it at inflated prices. Land was to be sold as packages. Settlers received 100 rural acres for each town, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, well, I'm going back to this, just to the dates. I've been looking and I've actually just post, I uh, will be posting more on mines and when all the mining towns were pumping up. Now these aren't mining towns, but they were booming in the same town as the mines. Now if you look at the gold mines and how many people were, you know, were rushed. I was looking at the Waihe, um, just reading about the battery, Victoria battery there today. 5,000 men, apparently went straight to the to the Victoria Battery. Um, I will be going there within the next few weeks and doing some live footage. So let's have a look. Uh, company dreams. So I'm just, what I plan to do is look, get, um, there must be already one somewhere, timeline of how many people were in New Zealand and looking at all these dates, because it all happened in 1840. I have the first Gazette, um, that was written as well and again it was in 1840 that's when it all that's the treaty was signed yeah all kicked off the reset in 1840 